Uh, Simon, the timeline to this was interesting. 3.40 yesterday afternoon, it was announced that Roy Hodgson was stepping down as manager of Crystal Palace. 5.20, one hour 40 minutes later, uh, they announced that Oliver Glasner yeah. was his successor. Yeah. I mean, um, Palace had reportedly been reluctant to sack Roy um, and of course in view of what had been going on uh, he ends up in hospital poor Roy and I hope he's now out and I hope he's recovering uh, but a run of two wins in 15 games since the start of November including an FA Cup exit at Everton caused them to wax yeah. How do you, what's your take the handling of this I know you've come back in from Spain to it but you've been across it the way it was handled there's Glasner watching his team for the first time last night uh, the new man in charge Roy the paint hardly dry in Roy's departure. What's your take on it? It's life, isn't it? That's the way it goes. I mean, he's going to get paid on the way out. Um, he's, you know, he's done a decent job for Palace over the years. He's not my kind of manager in terms of the brand of football that he plays. But I respect Roy. I respected him when I was the owner of Crystal Palace and he came and watched games because he was a Palace fan. Um, I don't look at his body of work over the years and think it's a wonderful resume. I know he's got 21 jobs and people will now talk about him in a very sentimental terms. Um, but Palace had made their mind up, it would appear. I wasn't advocating for Roy um, Hodgson to be removed, but the only sort of fly in the ointment is that he took was taken unwell last week. It would appear that the decision was made one way or another, it found its way into the media, whether that was Palace or the manager himself uh, and his representation that decided to allow that to find its way into the media. They were prepared for that to happen because it's not difficult. We've seen, if you want to keep something secret, we've seen it happen, you can. Yes. Right? yes. So they didn't. Yeah. So with all this sentimentality about Roy Hodgson, the end was coming. It was a bad appointment for the second year. It was a good appointment to get them out of the hole that they got themselves into with Patrick Vieira. It was an, unin an uninspiring decision to extend it with Roy, irrespective of the results that he got last year. They began to reap the whirlwind. The moment it blows back onto the owners and blows back onto the chairman, is always going to be, well, that's not. I'm going to push back from that. And my suggestion was that Palace would have stayed in the Premier League with Roy Hodgson. But if you're going to make take him out and you've got somebody in mind, make the decision. Right. And in comes Glasner. What do we know about him? Constantine Eckner, um, just a few days ago, a respected German journalist, uh, told us a bit about this fellow Glasner. He was quite successful, at least, at Eintracht Frankfurt, uh, winning the Europa League in 2022. Uh, he comes from the kind of the Red Bull uh, school of football. Uh, I mean, he was born in Salzburg and he also played there and uh, coached there. So you, you can see some of these these RB Leipzig Red Bull uh, traits in, in his game. High press, intensity, um, counter-attacking style. Usually that's why Frankfurt was so successful in the Europa League because they were usually the underdogs against Barcelona and West Ham United. Um, and they were not so, so successful in the Bundesliga because they're against the weaker sides. You, you need to have the ball at times, which uh, didn't really suit um, Oliver Klaasner's game. I mean, you guys might uh, then can assess if uh, his, his style suits Crystal Palace. I, I guess so, yes. Um, I think the biggest concern right now is um, that in his final year at Frankfurt, um, before that he was kind of known as level-headed, as someone who can get along with the players, but he became quite erratic when things didn't go his way and, and things uh, got a little bit um, dicey at times and, and he lashed out at the media and at just at everyone, basically. So there might be some concern um, how he deals with pressure. Interesting. So there's a bit of combustibility about him. You you wanted a forward-thinking appointment. Have you, have you got it? Um, possibly. It's a change of direction, isn't it? They've made this change a few times. They brought in Frank de Boer. That didn't work out after four games. They brought in fact Patrick Vieira. That didn't work out after 16 months. What's kept Palace stable has been the preparedness to go to managers that know the Premier League yeah. and keep them in the Premier League, whether it be Tony Pulis, who we saw last week, whether it be Alan Pardew, whether it be Roy Hodgson, whether it be Sam Allardyce. I'm not suggesting either that's an ambitious philosophy, but it's a realistic one. This guy comes in. We'll see. I mean, look, he's a combustible character. Most of these managers are. Mm. And, and and most of these managers are difficult to manage in this day and age because yeah. we've built up a, an industry full of prima donnas. But the point is, is that if he's capable of doing his job and is capable of resourcing what's there into a better unit than what we've currently seen, then so be it. So, and so be it. OK, we've seen a procession of people go from Brighton to Chelsea. Here's another. Brighton have placed their head of recruitment, Sam Jewell, on gardening leave. He's uh, accepted an offer to join Chelsea. He's off to the bridge. Uh, we're off to the next bulletin at half ten. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.